So this is a look in the uh, box and a little bit of run through uh, with the kit of the Roden Holt 75 artillery tractor with the 8 inch howitzer being towed behind and all its lumber. Uh, this is kit number 814 and this was uh, kindly sent to the channel for review and uh, hopefully a build in the future uh, by Roden. So that's uh, I'm very grateful to them for that. So let's have a look inside the box. So as you would expect with a kit this size, we've got quite a comprehensive uh, booklet here and um, this is basically two of their kits in one. Um, there's a large rundown there of uh, information regarding the kit itself uh, in three different languages and I believe that is uh, Russian, English and German. Uh, then we've got a parts breakdown inside as we open it up for the Holt tractor and that's where we begin. So we've got a nice sprue layout there uh, with four sprues of the tract and we start with the wheels that's uh, making up in uh, we basically got a wheel at the front which is the turning wheel and then we've got a lot of little wheels uh, making up the running gear. So then we start to put the running gear together and um, create the wheel at the front there as well which is the main turning wheel and then put the chassis together all separate parts there. The attachment of the running gear goes on here in step 10. Then we're running on through step 11 with a few small um, details being added as well as the sprockets. And then we've got a few more details here making up the rest of the chassis. And then we've got a full engine. That makes up the main part of this uh, vehicle. Uh, this being like an open vehicle, a bit like a traction engine is. Um, uh, so you've got the engine running in the middle. It more or less is a, a tracked traction engine really, um, but it's powered by uh, petrol or diesel engine I believe. So then we've got the fenders that are um, supplied in this bent up fashion, so you just bend those down on the score line and I think that's for easing um, them in transit and not having them bent over so much. So then the tracks go on, we've got the idlers going in as you put the tracks on. The engine assembly also goes on to its mounting block as well. And then all of those parts are brought together onto the chassis. Then a few small finishing touches, so we've got the uh, funnel or the chimney and exhaust um, section, as well as what looks like a fuel tank and a radiator with the Holt logo uh, already engraved. And then we've got the cover here as well, which has got a corrugated roof to it. Um, and this is one piece, this... Uh, uh, framework that that all attaches to and then in the final assembly that goes on steering wheel cog and um, the good old-fashioned Fergie tractor seat is being um, attached there and that brings the build to an end well the application of the radiator does so paint callouts for this one are Vallejo and then we're straight into the inch howitzer. Again, we've got a parts breakdown, a little bit more um, more spread out, larger sort of parts breakdown on this. We're right into putting the wheels together. The um, uh, the wheels have tread around them, which is supplied here uh, more in black vinyl. So um, it'd be interesting to see how that goes together. And then the gun barrel and gun breech is all brought together put onto the gun carriage here as well where the wheels are joined together and we're starting to build up the lumber and the mount for the gun as well and you can do that stowed or open and there you go we're through that so the gun is a welcome addition after you've built the Holt tractor I'm sure it's not too much of a um, difficult looking build on the face of it looking through the instructions the time when it will tell itself is when you get into the plastic and see what it's like, what the fit's like, etc. But as far as a parts breakdown, it's relatively simple. And then you've got the section here showing you how the whole lot of it would join together and in what sequence. So we've got two marking options, one for the uh, British Expeditionary Forces in the Middle East in Palestine in 1917, and this is um, vehicle number 30599 and we've also got vehicle number 30868 which is on the western front in France in 1918. Similar marking options are for the gun as well so we've got a camouflage version or just a normal version. Starting with the tractor we've got a whole bag full of plastic here so we'll have a look at these parts and see what we make of them. I've seen a few builds of this one online, some people have had a little bit of trouble, but then others, I've seen that there's a chap on YouTube that's put this together and um, he's got it all in sub-assembly so he can clip it all together and then take it apart as well. Uh, so it must be pretty good if he can do that, or maybe he's an exceptional modeller. We'll soon see when I get involved in this one. So here you can see the fenders with the score line here where you're going to bend those ends down. I think that's a clever 
way of avoiding any damage in transit and it makes uh, the whole sprue light uh, flatter. A general detail overall is uh, pretty good what you'd sort of expect like I've said before from a sort of short run manufacturer a little bit of mold lines running around but um, that's exactly what you'd expect for this type of kit nice uh, bolt detail here where it's needed on these detail parts and I do like that corrugated um, structure there for the roof and uh, we've got the pre-made hole for the funnel chimney to go through so then we've got uh, two identical sprues here which have got the idlers, the main running gear, and a few other small bits. Again, it's a very crammed sprue, but the details there, um, it's all pretty well cleanly moulded. I can't see any sink marks or, or um, anything like that. There is mould seams. There is a little bit of heavy detail on some of the finer points, but with a bit of cleaning up, scraping with a knife blade, etc. Um, it's all what you'd expect on a kit like this, and it should come up pretty well. The detail's there, that's the good thing. Then we've got the sprue with the engine detail. Uh, the engine, sorry, and the um, exhaust and funnel and the seat, and all of that's pretty good. I like the way that's actually already opened up, so that's done well, and it's a nice shape. It's the uh, typical iconic shape there of those types of seats. We've got the gears here that have the belts running around them, so the drive assembly, and the belt is on that, and it's a nice touch. Pretty well done, I think. Nothing to worry about there. The two engine mounting blocks as well look pretty well detailed um, and we've got the Holt inscription there. So that's looking pretty good so far. Then we've got some smaller parts here. This is where the chassis is. Um, so that's the two parts that make up some of the chassis and then we've got some of the cross beams as well and a few other details. Nice raised bolt detail running around here and good strong locating joints here for this curved part to go around there. Again, it's all looking pretty good so far. Then we've got the four multiple tracks. Um, I'm not sure how these are going to go together. They um, do have the sort of look of them being workable, but whether that's going to be the case when you get them together, some of these companies do tend to struggle with that. I know with the Mini Art ones and a few other um, similar companies, they don't actually clip together and it's better just to glue them together. But um, we'll see what they're like when we get in there. Again, detail... Um, perhaps a little bit soft but it's all there i think with a swipe with a sanding stick that would um do a lot to uh sort those out and a little bit of flash is starting to appear on these sprues mainly just this one sprue actually this is a lot flashier than the rest of them then we've got another sprue here with some of the big circular parts which are the edges of some of the wheels um, so we've got the different wheels running on around the front section of the Hulk tractor with that big main wheel and these all these parts go together to make up that one big wheel. We've got a fuel tank here and a few other small details. All still moulded quite well, a little bit of flash on that one there as we were as I was putting it away I could see a bit of flash there. Again some more details, it's kind of hard to tell what they are looking at them on the sprue but they all go to make up parts for the chassis and the superstructure. Again same level of details running through, nice raised detail and bolt detail where you need it. And then we've got the large radiator with Holt written across the top and that is actually very well done. It's a nice grill uh, moulded into there, which is what you want. And we've also got some nice um, raised, uh, some tread pattern, which is well done and should come up under some um, bit of weathering. That should start to really make that pop. Uh, there is also a small photo etch fret for the Hulk tractor which is just um, some uh, plaques that go on the side with a little bit of writing on them. I'm not sure there's actually writing on there, I think it's just inscri uh, it been inscribed to make it look like the writing and there are the decals. Simple stuff and that's all we want. Then we've got a similar great big bag for the gun. So in here um, we've got all the parts to make up the lumber, um, the ammunition trolley the actual gun and the uh, mount for the gun to go in uh, in firing position so here is the black vinyl that's meant to go along the wheels now i'm a bit skeptical about how this is going to work because it says in the instructions not to paint it and i've never in the past had any uh good results with this sort of thing it's very wavy and it's not meant to be um so i I wouldn't have gone down this route personally myself, but they've they've done it for a reason uh, which I'm sure they think is a good reason. But personally, I would have rather just had that already moulded on 
or done it some other way because I think this is going to cause problems down the line. But we'll see what happens when we get into it. So these might come at the wrong order because I'm not actually sure what's what. But if we have a look at these two, I think these are the this is the two sections for the mounting block. Uh, if you're going to put the gun in the firing position and then it gets folded up and is part of what's towed behind the Hulk tractor. Um, so these are large blocks of plastic, um, all pretty well moulded. It does look slightly lesser, it's just not quite got the sharpness that the Hulk tractor did. Um, there's a few sink marks coming in here uh, where those parts run across. They're pulling in this bit here, um, so that's a bit of a problem heavier sort of mold lines as well it's just slightly um like i said it looks like it's probably a little bit older than the Hulk tractor not sure whether that's the case then we've got the gun breech so that's two halves so we're going to have to get rid of a seam there but i mean that's probably to be expected on a from this sort of manufacturer you're not going to get that in one piece probably not going to get that in one piece from a lot of people um nice raised bolt detail again running all over this a little bit of flash there at the end, but all of that should clean up no problem. The one piece sort of bed for the gun or chassis or, or whatever you'd like to call it, um, is, is done quite well. It's a nice shape to it. Solidly uh, moulded. There's no sort of bending, warping, sink marks or anything like that. And again, raised detail all over it, which is looking very good. Then we've got two duplicate sprues here that make up the wheels. And the main detail parts for the actual gun and... Um, uh, trailer and all of the rest of it. Some large handles there um, for the, the wheels, for moving the elevation of the gun and moving it around. Large piece of flash there, but again, it just peels off. It's not an issue. It's what you'd expect on these types of kits. And then again, that's the last part in the gun bag. I think it's actually gonna come together pretty well, to be honest, looking at it. I can't see any major issues. There's nothing glaring uh, here that's gonna make me think this is gonna be a terrible build. It's gonna be in depth for sure, but um, I think it'll probably come together quicker than you'd think looking at it in the bags. We've got some moulded on tools here on the sides, which um, it just about works, but with um, careful weathering, uh, you could make that look um, a lot better than um, it sort of lends itself to there. Obviously, they would have been better to be put on separately, but they've been moulded there and they've done quite well. So there we go, an impressive release from Rodin, and one that I'm sure um, World War I armour fans are going to be really um, interested in. I think, personally, looking at it in, in the box, it's um, it doesn't look like a bad kit at all to me. It just looks like a short-run kit of a subject that you're not probably going to get any other way, so I think um, make the most of it. And um, if this is your thing, get involved, I would say, because... Um, I don't imagine this is going to be around forever. It does say it's a limited edition. I think it makes for a, a, a cracking opportunity for an interesting project from a period that really does lend itself to depth of modelling possibilities because the weathering on this, you could do the one in Palestine, so that's the desert, or equally switch that to the Western Front. There's quite a few pictures online of these Hulk tractors being used. There's some of them sunk into the um, mud in the Western Front. There's also the, uh, a, a good couple of pictures of them obviously in the desert, running up sand dunes and all the rest of it. So the possibilities are endless. So hopefully that was um, of interest and um, should help if you're interested in this kit, should give you an idea of what to expect and what you're going to get. So um, again, thanks to Roden for sending this out to me. Um, I will be building it at some point, but uh, not it probably in the near future for the channel. But stay tuned. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.